Good morning, everyone. Woo, 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 woo. Oh, my goodness. So many people I love out there. So it's exciting. I didn't know I was going to be up here. I thought I was going to be one of those rooms. So that's a lot. But hello, everyone. So glad that you're here. All of you are awake. Congratulations. I'm wanting to text you, email you, everything. I love you. Baby coming. Naomi. Woo, woo, woo. OK. Um, and then she's next to my queen. I love her. She knows it. All right. Okay. Too many people I love. You guys know I would spend the whole 35 minutes pouring out love. Okay. But they've got me on a time thing and we're going to do this. So um, talking today about internal stability. So I, my, my, um, what I do as a profession is I'm a licensed professional counselor. I'm mentioning that because of the story I'm going to tell you. So I was working with a college aged young lady and she was, um, it, this actually just happened this week. She told me a story and she's in her finals week. And who else is in college right now? God bless you. God bless you. Just do it. You guys got this. You know that you are at the most stressful time in your life. It'll get better. Okay. So anyways, so she's in college killing herself and um, she knows that she has finals coming up. She has papers due, but her, her uh, sweet mates and people want her to party at that night and she wants to party with them. So they're texting back and forth. It's a plan. It's going to happen. As the afternoon goes on, she realizes, oh, we didn't set up a time. I don't know exactly what time, but she knew the where. The evening hits and no one has texted her. Everybody say, oh, you know, what that's like, right? And no one called her, but she knew she was part of the plan. They had been so excited, but when it came time for everything to come together, she just felt like everybody forgot about her. And here's what's so funny. She could hear them getting off the elevator and all going over. They were like, I guess they were three doors down from her. And she could hear them partying. And she sat there the whole night <laughs> and didn't go over because no one texted her. No one called her. And guess what she did instead? She cried herself to sleep. How many of you are kind of mad thinking, why don't you just go over? Raise your hand. Okay, how many of you get her and like, well, they didn't tell you what to say. Okay, we're mixing the room, you got it. Okay, regardless of your response, it's it, it just the fact is, is that what she was doing is called a love test. We all do them. You do them in your relationships, you do them in marriage, everything. You test the person that you love and they either pass or fail. What did her friends do? They failed the love test. So now she's not loved, all of the stuff, okay? So I'm talking to her, I ask her like, well, did you ever say anything? Did you ever go over and check and like find out what happened there? No, and I'm not going to say a word. Who would do that? Who would never show people that you were upset or you were hurt? You're not going to let them know that they made you cry yourself to sleep. No way. So that's what she said. So here's the deal. What ended up being revealed is that she wanted to appear as though she were okay. As long as externally she looked okay, no one knew that that had happened. I was like, so what's your plan? And she's like, I'm, we're just all not going to talk about it. And we're all just going to go on as if it didn't happen. I said, okay, that's your plan. That's what you're going to do. Honestly, as ladies, we can relate to this. We can be a hot mess, okay? We're trying to get ready for church and everything is falling apart, right? Kids are acting crazy. You even fought with people on the way to church. You have road rage because you got to get there and somebody's slow in front of you. You got stuck behind a train. You're dying. Road rage. And you get into church. Praise the Lord, saints. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everyone. I am here. Everybody good? Somebody tells you you look cute. Score. Right? You did your song great. Yes. You did your ministry great. And you left. And are you fine on the inside at all? No, but you tricked everybody and you feel good about it. Success, success, right? We just love that. Now what ends up happening is we can go to church with what I call our helmets on, right? Have you done that? You're just kind of bearing down. You might be having a bad day, bad month, bad year. You're just really not okay, but you can actually put a helmet on. Here's the danger in that. And I have done that. I have come to a place where, especially if you're going through a trial or a hard situation and you're going through stuff in your life, I have been like, everyone I am here and you do not know what it took for me to be here so try me test me sister so-and-so take my spot you yell at me you be rude you walk by me I'm waiting for someone because I'm so angry you just you just you guys don't know like I'm Kindle you put that match on and you are lucky that I'm even in the building <laughs> who's been there you're not fine at all and you walked it right been there so what I did and what we do is we put on our helmet 
Like, I'm ready for battle. You're not going to take me down. I'm going to keep it together, etc. And what ends up happening is you go to church and you leave the exact same way that you came. When you were in the presence of the Almighty God, who could make a difference in your situation, but you leave the exact same way. Isn't that actually tragic when we think about what we're doing? So I realized that we like to look externally stable, even if we're not internally stable, right? Okay, what would happen, though, if we prioritized our internal state? What would happen, right? Wouldn't that be awesome? In my field, this is so important. People who are coming to me are wanting to address their internal world. That's what they want to work on, right? They want to learn how to be stable internally. Do you know how many people I work with that people, everyone around them thinks they're fine? Isn't that true? We look like we're fine, right? But internally, they're not, okay? So, I love you, Whitney. So, having an internal, people are going to text me. It's going to be great. I'm just going to get all your love and just do this when it happens. Okay, having internal stability, here's what it can look like rooted. It looks like having an authentic, truth-centered relationship with God as your foundation. Authentic, true. You know how he knows already? Why do we do that? When we're the worst, we don't even want to pray. I don't. I don't want to pray when I'm mad. I don't want to talk to anyone and not him either. Right? When I'm not okay. But actually the foundation is having that truth-centered relationship with God. So here's something I want to just kind of reveal. We have to get to that place where we learn to trust God to show us the condition of our heart by whatever means necessary. That means someone can say something. That means you were harsh with your kid and you saw the tears in their eyes and you're like, oh, right? By whatever means necessary, God, show me my heart. So when you are frustrated, when you're mad, when you're discouraged, when you're bitter, when you're vengeful, when you're joyless, been there, right? And when you're irritated, for those of you who have children, you can relate. When you're irritated as a parent, when you're irritated as a spouse, when you're annoyed as a friend, any of that's going on, you don't so much need to be rescued from the people that are in your life. Ever been like, God, deliver me from this child. Literally, I want to take my daughter out sometime. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, I will take you out. I brought you here. I will get down to her level. I will get crazy. And I'm like, I'm glad no one sees me because I look crazy. And I'm talking to a little girl. She tears up and I'm like, what in the world's wrong with you? Come here, mom. How many parent fails? How many moments you just lost it? You're acting ridiculous. And I'm like, God, you see it, but thank God no one else does. Okay, so here's the deal. You don't know so much need to be rescued from the little people or the people in your life. You need to be rescued from yourself, right? Gosh, you guys are like in with me. You guys are making me, I don't, I don't want to leave. Okay, so pretend that you're holding a bowl of water. Can you put the hands out in front of you? You are holding a bowl. It's filled with water. Now shake it. What's going to happen to the water in that bowl? Flush, right? You guys knew that. You guys are like, thank you for that lesson. It was beautiful. I actually almost bought water. I'm like, it's so ridiculous. I can just tell them. Okay, shook it, okay? Why, so why did the water go out of the bowl? That is correct, and, but that's partially correct. Water splashed out of that bowl because water was inside of that bowl. Don't you hate those people who have that other answer? Okay, okay. I didn't know you were asking me all that. Right. Okay. But yes, this is true. I will use that card. Water came out because you shook it. Water also came out because it was in the bowl. Had it been milk, had it been orange juice, no, most of you wouldn't have shaken it because you're not crazy. But had it been milk, had it been orange juice, that's what would have spilled out. Here's the thing about it. In the same way, it's important, let's use parents again. It's important for parents, for them to understand and humbly admit <laughs> that when I'm shaken by sin, when I'm shaken by weakness, by rebellion, or failure of my children, what comes out of me, my words, my actions, and my thoughts is what's already inside of me, right? What's already inside of me comes out. This means that my biggest and ongoing problem with, with myself when I'm sitting there trying to blame other people, my biggest and ongoing problem, it isn't them, it's me. It's me, okay? So my children don't cause me to say and act in any way, okay? They are simply the vehicles that are being used to reveal what's already inside of me. Make sense? All right. So this is true. This is true in all relationships. If you get in the habit of blaming other people, 
Have you had a day where you're like, everybody on the planet is trifling? All of y'all. I hate everybody. <laughs> hate every. I've been there where you hate every. I've been there where I'm like, God, baptize me with a love for people because I hate everyone on the whole planet. Maybe you have one friend where you're like, okay, I kind of like you, but I hate everybody, right? When you get in the place, <laughs> it's so true. When you get in the place where you're blaming other people, you're blaming your children, you're blaming your spouse, you're blaming family members, coworkers, or whatever for your bad attitudes, your actions, your words, you're not only going to embitter people, hurt, offend, all the other things, you're not only going to embitter them, but you're going to fail to reach out to Christ, who is the one and the capable one to rescue you and to forgive you and to free you from your situation because your eyes are too busy looking out there and not up here, okay? But when we're willing to confess, God, thank you for showing me my anger, my resentment, my jealousy, right? Some of you with your social media world, how many of you like go on and then you're like, I'm going on a fast because you're too busy comparing and oh gosh, it's so real. Okay, God, thank you for showing me all this that's in my heart. You're well on the road to good things when you can pray that prayer and ask God. So here's the deal, God showed me this before I got here today, that God has been dealing with some of you in the room. He's been revealing things to you. He's been bringing things to the surface. He's been showing you your heart, okay? <laughs> and here's the question, what are you going to do about it? What are you gonna do about it when God shows you something or you can see it plain as day? What are you gonna do about it? What are you gonna do when you're thinking about, oh, I'm really triggered? Triggered by this or that. That's a hot word right now, okay? There's a root to your triggers. There's a root to what's bothering you. When you're lashing out on someone, okay, there's probably some unresolved anger. How many of you lashed out on someone and you knew it wasn't their fault? Okay, this is human. Let's <laughs> be to this. Okay, you're going through a trial. How are you navigating your trial? How are you navigating what you're going through? Are you the person who stuffs it all down? Cling, lock the key and then pretend that it didn't and try to ignore it. Are you actually seeking out, reaching out, trying to get some help? So through a series of trials in my life, I learned that internal stability comes when I learn how to let go. Okay? We have to let go of what's familiar, of what's predictable. Okay? You guess what? You're, if you really think about what's happening, you are on this infinite, it feels like infinite, till the Lord comes back, journey of trust of learning how to trust God, of not maybe understanding some of the things that have happened, but you're on this journey of trust. God has a specific path for each one of us to help us even get to that place of having internal stability. I think of peace when I think of internal stability, right? He has a specific path to teach us that, and he wants to teach you to let go of what you're holding on to, to take his hand and to allow him to lead and guide you through this whole process. God, help me to let go. Help me to see my heart. So I'm going to share something with you that God, God put on my heart. I had a sweet friend who was helping me yesterday, and she just said the two words like, let go. And I was like, that's exactly it. And then all this came, up, it came unraveling here. Prior to moving to Wisconsin, we, we've lived here for almost four years now this August. And my family and I, we lived in St. Louis, Missouri. Yes, we were hotter when we were there. And so... We were happy, we were content, and we were comfortable. How many knows what happens when you're comfortable? <laughs> right? We were comfortable, okay? There's too much to share, but suffice to say that God, it, he just started shaking our world, right? So I was involved in several ministries. I had obligations, and little by little, it felt as though he just kept taking things out of my hands, like little by little. So this process was actually very painful for me. Ever had to let go of something you actually like doing and you enjoy? It's painful, isn't it? It hurts. So one little thing I'll share is um, I was a Bible quizzing coach in, in Missouri. And it's so sweet because God's brought it back to my life and I got to get back in the quiz ministry this year. Woo, woo. So don't feel too sorry for me as I share my story. But here's the deal. About, it was, it's been years ago since I've done it and I was in St. Louis and God started dealing with me on um, letting it go. I, I wasn't prioritizing my family. I wasn't giving my husband time. Like I was just busy and I wanted them to like fend for themselves and figure it out because I'm doing my thing. You guys figure your lives out. So... That's how I was living. That's what I was doing. I was very busy. It was too overwhelming. I worked my full-time job, all this stuff. Well, the point is, is that I started feeling a shifting, like, oh, I'm supposed to, something's supposed to change here. You can tell that when you're like, 
or it's not working together, or you're fighting a little bit much. There's things that show that this, your situation is not working, and even though you're trying to pretend that it is. So God was doing that to me, and I actually started, I entered a season of um, extreme anxiety. I couldn't go to sleep well. My mind, everybody knew you were in there. My mind just wouldn't turn off. I kept thinking of like different ways to make something work. I was just in a tormented place. And the reality is, is that I just kept seeing their little faces. I was dealing with it. I kind of felt like this is where I might have to go. But like ever just done something and you know the people that you're investing and sacrificing for are worth it? Like every sacrifice that you ever made, they're worth it? That's what was going on for me. I was like, but they're worth it. And I couldn't reconcile it. So I couldn't get through. Anyways, this just went on. It went on for a little bit. The director of the program was just asking me for a decision for next year and I was like, I couldn't, just like, I got so frozen. Well, I'm at the altar one time. That's a good place to be, huh? So I'm at the altar one time, and I'm praying, and I had already been praying about this, but I was praying, and I just don't know. I mean, I can't, I don't know if you can just understand, like, where it feels like there's a cloud around you, like it never lifts, like your mind always feels just, so I was in a season where I just never felt anything but that anxiety for a little bit, like I just always felt it swirling, swirling, swirling. So I'm at the altar, I'm praying about it, and then suddenly it hit me, and I say, God, are you telling me no? <laughs> Instant peace. Like, I can't describe. Instantly, everything that was, I was feeling, all the angst, it lifted. And I felt just like nothing. And I was like, what is going on? Because I've been living with this anxiety for, for months now. What's, what's happening? It was gone. And I suddenly felt peace. And I said, oh, you're telling me no. <laughs> you're telling me no. I'm, I mean, I'm on the beach chilling like peace, like relaxed, give me a sweet drink, you know what I mean, like relaxed, and I was just like, oh, that's what it took, <laughs> it took me accepting, hearing it, and then accepting that he said it, and then I was like, you're telling me no, and then I cried, because I'd already been crying, you're telling me no, I have told, and I knew what I had to do, you know what you have to do sometimes, and it's time to do it, cried, cried, got up, and went and, and dealt with it immediately. I entered into this beautiful season of peace, okay? It was amazing. Well, here's what, here's just one more little thing, okay? But I was struggling. I was struggling with doing that. After letting go of this ministry I'm in, I was the choir director. I mean, I was Whoopi, me and Whoopi Goldberg, Sister Act 2, you have to see it for the people who are non-Christians who know the movie I'm talking about. No, I'm joking. I love Sister Act 2, I can't lie. All right, but here's the deal. I'm like choir directing, I'm loving my life, I loved it, it was so fun. And he started dealing with me to let go of the ministry. In fact, my husband even came and said, can you please stop doing this? What happens when your spouse asks you? Most sweet people would be like, absolutely. I was like, I don't know yet. I couldn't. And here's my biggest reason. I came from Brother Tom Tremble's church in St. Louis. So Anthony Tremble, many people were praying for him all over the world. Anthony Tremble had got, had got diagnosed with cancer. And he's fighting. And I, he might have been in a good season even. But if I don't do the choir, he's not doing the choir, right? When you feel like it all lands on your shoulders. And he's like, I'm like, but Easter's coming up. Okay, okay, maybe I'll sit down. I kept doing that. I got to get through the Christmas program. <laughs> then I'm like, but Easter's coming up. And he's like, baby, it's never going to stop. <laughs> Whatever comes up. He's like, it's okay if we don't have a choir for Easter. What? <laughs> what do you mean no choir for Easter? <laughs> Anybody been there? You had to make a decision that's like normal, but you just think it's so out of the norm, out of what you're used to. What do you mean no choir for Easter? I like, <laughs> like laughed, like, this is laughable, you're crazy. And he's like, he just had planted that seed, God dealing with me, same thing. I realized that some of you, I'm hoping this is giving you insight, some of your anxiety and your torment has to do with your relationship and what you're fighting against and, what, and how you're not actually responding to what God's telling you. I hope that you hear that. So that happened to me again, okay? I'm in torment again, I know, and oh my goodness, now there's all these adults, like 50 adults that I'm dealing, it just was, you know, I'm responsible for this ministry, it was a big deal, and I knew nobody was going to take it, because there wasn't anybody to take it after. That's the worst feeling ever. Also, when you think you're the only one on the planet who can do a ministry, do you hear the pride in it? No one else can do this ministry but me, okay? So all that was going on in my heart, and I remember when I finally... I finally had to make the decision. I, I couldn't deny it. We talked to this counselor person in our lives, and he's a precious, precious man of God that we love, and he had to, you know, had to help us. He gave me this analogy. I'm only going to share it because some of you are here and you need it. But he told us, he's like, what would happen if your house were on fire? He's like, who would you get out? And we're just like the kids and each other, and we're out. I even, I love my dog, and I forgot to say my dog. I love Hazel. Hazel didn't come to my mind. 
I was like, my family, my kids. And he's like, okay, so you have that image of you guys. He's like, where would you go? I was like, well, we'd run away from the house and um, I don't know, like be huddled on the grass, probably just crying, watching our, you know what I mean? One of those scenes or whatever. And he said, that's your why. And that's the image you need to remember. Who are the people who are most important to you, right? What's most important and what are you doing for those people? I mean, it just became clear as day. I was like, oh. he's like, and here's the other thing. If you guys want to go the extra mile, put every single thing you do on a piece of paper. And Ahi and I did this in my, our list for so long because <laughs> we were too much. We we're doing too much. But put every single thing on a piece of paper. And then he said, and both of you have to agree on whatever you circle. And if both of you don't agree, it's X'd off. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> ah! I can't, like, you know what I mean? Doesn't that sound terrible? Ah! See, like, you can't control anything and he can just exit off. And I'm like, no, you're too control. I mean, it caused fights. It was nuts. We were just trying to do this activity, okay? But here's the deal. I had to let go. <laughs> I had to let go. It was costing too much, okay? Now, here's the deal. I go to my pastor and I tell him, I say, I am having a crisis of priorities. That's where I'm at. I don't even want to do this, but I'm having a crisis of priorities. He understood. It was beautiful. Like, he was so kind. I don't love you, Sister Cammie, because of what you do. I love you because of who you are. Like, it was the most beautiful, like, ah, moment, release, beautifulness. So this is what's going on. Do you guys see? For me, these were all, like, big things. It was all happening in a short period of time. I'm letting go of these ministries. And I'm not going to tell tons of details further, but I just want to say, like, my husband's work situation, he's the most consistent rock of my life. His work situation fell apart. Our car got recalled, and we had to give our car back and sell it for some money. We couldn't pay for our house. We had to sell our house. All of you are like, this is quite obvious what God is doing, isn't it? When you're in the middle of it, you're a mess. I couldn't see. I was like, what is happening? All I felt was like I was a victim. Though he slay me, yet I, will try. I was just trying to live. I was trying to survive. Ever been in survival mode? I was a wreck. I was not fine at all. I was putting my helmet on, though, and I tried to look cute. But I was a wreck. I wasn't fine. Everything was falling apart, okay? So we had all of these jobs and obligations and all these things that we were supposed to do, and God was taking them one by one from us, our housing situation, our car, job, ministries, one by one, Lord, plucking them out of our hands. And as painful as all of that sounds, please hear me. There is no job. There is no house. <laughs> There's no position that is more important than your relationship with God. Not one. Not one thing you can name that is more important than your relationship with God and that you and God are fine and that you're in a place of trust and you're in a place of peace. Your, in your internal stability comes from making sure that that avenue is where it needs to be and that he's the one you're hearing. And here's what happened. During all of this, I learned something about myself that's obvious. Instability triggers me. <laughs> all, of you, all of you knew that 10 minutes ago. But I learned instability triggers me. How many of you are like that? If things are off, things aren't right, something's going on financially, something's going on with the house, whatever, kids, oh my word. If like the little, my kids aren't fine and like, I can't, it just is, I'm not fine. It's not, it's not fine. It, instability triggers, okay? And I, I want you to know that early on in this process of chaos that I'm describing, just let me tell you this, let me throw it in there. My husband comes to me and he says, hey baby, I was driving home and I felt the Lord speak to me. I'm like, oh great. <laughs> what do you mean you felt the Lord speak to you? Like, I don't even want to hear anymore. And I'm like, that's so unkind and unchristian. So I'm like, what did he say, baby? Trying to act open, but I hated every second of the whole talk. And he's just like, well, I feel God's that, this is again, this is how I ended up here in front of y'all guys. This is all my journey. But he's like, I feel, I know, right? I'm so happy now. I love you guys. But it was drama. It was drama. He's like, I feel God transitioning us and I feel like we're going to move. And I'm like, I can't hear you. You're not speaking English. We're not speaking the same language. I don't, I don't even care what you're trying to tell me. Like, no. Like, it was a strong no. It wasn't even like a kind of no. I actually said it out loud. I was like, no. No. <laughs> That's what I said right away. And he's like, well, I was like, are you sure it was God? <laughs> it's true. It's so wrong, but I did. And he's the priest of my home. And if you knew him, he's an amazing man of God. But I was like, are you sure that was God who talked to you? <laughs> 
Did you hear an audible voice or was it your own voice? Like, I'm ridiculous, I promise. Who else is ridiculous? Just let, let me not feel alone. That's how I'm ridiculous, I'm ridiculous. Okay, so I'm doing all of that. He's like standing strong but kind and he says to me, he's like, baby, I've already prayed and I know that God has to speak to you for himself. And he said, so I'm not going to bring it up again. I'm not going to pressure you. And I'm thinking, great, because I'm going to ignore you said this. We're going to pretend this didn't happen. I'm going to move on with my life. Great. This is, I'm like feeling, I told him, I was like, oh, my chest has just opened up. I feel so much peace with that decision. And I I did. I'm so ridiculous. I can't tell you guys all my stories because there's so many ridiculous ones. And he's, and he says to me, he's like, okay, I'm going to, yeah, God, uh, whatever. Like I'll let God, God talk to you. God reveal it. God show it to you. And um, I actually didn't pray about it. Not then. <laughs> I just went out with my life. I'm not kidding. I was too busy. <laughs> I was just like, great. Another thing I don't think about. So I didn't, it, it, like, literally, I'm being real, but do you know that we do that? You say you'll pray about it, and you didn't pray about it at all, okay? So I didn't. I didn't pray about it at first, and then I started praying about it a little bit, and my prayer was like, God, like, re- I've always trusted him, but this doesn't feel right, you know? Like, I don't know. Not, what's your will, God? Or what are you speaking out? Right? I was still, I was trying, me and God were, I was trying to manipulate God too. I mean, it's true. Okay, all that's going on. And now here's the deal. I, um, they talked about it yesterday, but I went to the Deborah Project in St. Louis. I, I, I spoke at a breakout session there. And I'm there. Isn't it funny when God asks you to minister when your life is falling apart? Right? So I'm like, sure, I'll go to the Deborah Project and speak at this thing. Okay, so I spoke at, a, at one of the sessions. And while I'm there, the evening speaker, um, she spoke a message that was called Delete the Default. Okay, and the whole, the, the foundation is, you know, internet browsers, right? You can have Google, you can have Safari. The fact is you can only have one default browser. If you're going to change to another browser, you have to delete the default, right? So she's preaching this message, and I sit there and I'm like, I need to delete my default. I expect things to be a certain way. I expect that if God wants to do something, he's going to do it in this way. He's going to say it in this way. He's going to provide us our job. Everything's going to fall in line. Everything's going to work out. And I expected it to be a certain way. He's going to talk to me too. I'm going to feel it so strong. But the reality is I had such a, um, um, I had, I don't know, I, I feel like I was so chained in the way that I thought that everything should happen. And I needed to delete my default <laughs> so that I could actually be open And when I got to the altar, I mean, I just, like, crawled. Because, you know, when God's moving with you, you can't even walk, right? So I just, like, crawled to the altar practically, fell down. I am weeping. And I'm like, oh, my God, I wasn't even willing to hear. Like, my ears were so closed because I was like, no. Do you know know why? Because I felt rooted and planted where I was. I wasn't, I was rooted. My roots were deep, and I was planted, and I felt like I was so blossoming. And I was supposed to, I was going to die there probably. I had no desire to move, like, not even a little bit. Been there before? He's shaking your world up, and you're just like, eh, I don't know about this. Okay, so it was the fact is that I had this default. I need to delete my default. And when I went to the altar and I said, God, I have, I have to hear you. I have to open up. He's help, heard from you, et cetera. You know what God speaks to me? He said, I'm sending you. I didn't even know I was coming here. He said, I'm sending you to a place that you know not because I have a people for you to reach. I didn't even know what, and I heard him. And I go home to my husband, I said, God spoke to me. (laughs) In spite of me, God spoke to me, right? And I went, and anyways, we can go on and on. But here's the thing. When you're in this season, and there's so much instability, and you need it internally, tuning in, hearing God's voice, hearing what he has for you. He showed me this. um, I, I know it feels lonely. I know it can feel so lonely. And God showed me this. When you're in a season where you just feel so lonely, you... You feel disconnected from others. I've told people this a lot of times. Yes, it's possible that he's transitioning you. But the other possibility is that he showed me this, like literally a vision where I was, his hands were here, and I was in the pool of the population of people. It's just really my vision. And he plucked me out, and he put me in his hands. And, his, and I was in his hands, and he, I was clay. And he was doing, he was manipulating, he was working on me, whatever. And I was alone because I wasn't with anybody else because he was working on me. And then when I was finished, he took me and he put me back in the group of people. It was a really powerful analogy and I felt to share that today, to say that when you are alone and you're feeling you're alone, there usually is something else going on, which is why it's so important to actually seek God, to ask him what is happening. When you're being kind of angry towards others, I don't, have you been angry before and you're like, I don't know, I'm just so angry? 
I don't know why I'm so triggered. Why am I so upset? And asking God, God, reveal what's in me. What's causing this? What's getting me to act like this? Why am I treating others like this? There's always often a cause that it's so important to actually seek God's face on and ask him about. And he showed me this. I'm in this... I don't, it probably, actually, I go through all sorts of different seasons. If you know me, I have 10 million stories. My poor church. <laughs> they hear so many of my stories. I have 10 million. So I'm not going to talk about it, but I want you to know what he gave me. One night I had, I had, I just couldn't fall asleep, anxiety, all the signs, right, that I'm struggling and dealing with something. And I remember um, it was, as I said, instability triggers me. So it was around, um, like, financial. That's what it was. It was like a financial trial that we were in. And I, and actually in the midst of it, he was even asking us to give sacrificially. I know. I'm just being so real. You want me to give sacrificially when we're struggling? Really, Jesus? You know what I'm saying? It was that whole thing. You guys know God works completely different than we think. Delete your default. He doesn't work the same way you think. So this is all going on. I'm struggling. I'm anxious that night. And I remember him waking me up. Um, and he says to me, he shows me this verse. And he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, okay? And we know what that verse says, but here's what God, because I've been studying it, and he brought it to my memory in the amplified version. <laughs> I will never leave you nor forsake you. No, not ever. I will never let go of your hand or slack in my grip. No, not ever, <laughs> okay? And what he showed me is that even when I'm feeling, I was feeling so alone, and I was thinking that my, everything was falling apart. He was showing me, you've never hit bottom, in the way that you think you're hitting bottom right now. Your family is okay, I have not touched them. Your children are okay, I have not touched them. Because I was envisioning us living in some random apartment laying on cardboard boards. I'm not kidding. Anybody just make up stuff in your brain? It was all falling apart, whole world. And he's saying, I will never, I've never let go of my grip on you. And there comes a time when you start to really lean and trust God. <laughs> Even when you don't see it and you don't, don't know what's going to happen to you. Okay, so I'm pumped because I finished and I had three minutes left. I know, the victory is strong right now. Um, does anybody have like a, a thought or a question they want to bring up right now? I don't expect you to, but if you do. Anybody, something's burning. Oh, we have one. Come on in the house. You got to yell it out. What's your name? Sean? Can you just come a little closer? I can't hear anything you're saying still. But you're so cute. Can somebody help her? Yell it out. She said, I've been going through a lot of health. I heard that. Come on, is it Sean? Sean wanted to help everybody today, and she wanted to tell you guys that if you're dealing with a lot of inflammation and things, um, that she put castor oil on. Some people know castor oil is pretty effective. You got a witness in the house, Sean. You got some witnesses. So castor oil and things like that actually can help to suppress, so kind of reduce the inflammation and that she woke up. Some people, I was talking to a friend recently about chronic pain. Some people really go through that. Sean, thank you. You felt that in your heart to kind of give a word to help because we were talking a lot about anxiety. Thank you for being brave. We appreciate that. God bless you. Okay, guys, <clears throat> I'm done. I'm done. And I love you guys. Thank you so much for having me. God bless you all.